standing in the uh, the vintage tape machine room, which is a originally was a kitchen, but is now a complete uh, self-contained live room of sorts and analog studio uh, attached to the main studio, which is upstairs. Yeah, from Bedford here was born here, third uh, of October 1977, at Bedford Northwing Hospital which is on the Kim Bolton Road there. I'm knocked down the maternity wing now, but that's another another story. So I've, li I've pretty much lived here all my life, you know, with a few spells visiting other countries and cities. But yeah, just pretty much Bed Bedford is the base for me. You know, yes, mm -hmm. definitely. I remember back in 1988 playing tennis racket guitar to Iron Maiden, Can I Play With Madness? <laughs> Uh, and uh, it was on the 4th of October 1990 where I picked up uh, my dad's Yamaha guitar um, and it only had about four strings on and it was a Thursday night and I remember we recorded a tape um, called uh, Maniacs from Mars which was the first album I ever made or you know I thought wow this is good and so that year 1990 come the November I formed a band called Dunlop Shoes mm -hmm. with a couple of schoolmates and we used to just make uh, cassettes and sell them to a girl called Emma Matthews was still out there somewhere um, and uh, yeah so that was how we sort of started and it just kind of progressed from there and I sort of honed my guitar skills again very much came from the background of listening to lots of music and, and really been a fan of all the music that had gone before and just absorbing it all really just like you just see something you go wow he's doing it like that that's cool I love that I want to have a go at that so that's kind of how I got into it I love animals I love I love birds and I love cats I like dogs um, yeah, I love animals, I do, I really do, I they're great. I'm more of a cat person, um, but I do like dogs as well. Uh, but yeah, I'd say I'm more of a cat person. Yeah. But the, the sort of the feline groove, just the way that they, the way they move, and uh, yeah, just, just I, like, I'm, I love cats. I love a, I've got a cat called Cassie. Yeah. So. I've done, I had, well I mean as far as my sort of career goes with my music and stuff, I've had I had an album out on an independent label in 2001, another one out in 2002, they sold moderately successfully. Um, I'd cut my teeth back in 97 releasing an album a month, which is where that original concept comes from, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, yeah, I've, I've had various gigs where I've been paid to perform and be Matt Roberts the artist. Um, uh, as, as opposed to sort of Matt Roberts, the person who makes his living singing covers. But yeah, I've had a couple of nice gigs where I had a couple of shows supporting Joan Armour Trading, performing my own stuff at the stables in Wavendon, a few other things where it's been more of an original thing. But I'm currently doing, we're in 2013, and for the, all of 2011, 2012, and this year, I'm releasing an album a month of my own material each month. A new album must be delivered by the last Monday of the month, and it's recorded here, all various different styles and music whatever really takes the fancy just living in artistic freedom really so you can kind of and some sell and some completely flop and don't sell at all you know but it's with the, with the advent of SoundCloud and the different things that you can get them online I, I just want people to hear it really you know and, and making any money off of it is a bonus of course my loving ghost hunting I wouldn't say it's an official society for the record <laughs> um, but my, it's, we got a page up just, I just like to, there's several locations in Bedford that I, I'm fascinated by time, I'm fascinated by history, so I like to, you know, uh, you know, visit these places from time to time, and I've been going there for, for years, you mentioned Clop Hill, the White Lady, various different places, you know, places that have been, you know, kind of visited many times, and I've sort of got a couple of books on it, so yeah, I like that whole element of it as well, so yeah, it's good. I'm into history, antiques, mm. antique dealer. If anyone asks, I'm an antique consultant, <laughs> not a musician. When I sort of, um, when I play it, that's like all those years, it's 126 years, <laughs> coming back through your fingers, and, you know, who's played this piano, no one knows, you know, it's, uh, who, it's got so much story to tell, and that's why I like stuff that's got a bit of vintageness to it or a bit of heritage because you know you're kind of um, playing you're feeling stuff that's been around a long time and it's got a story to tell and... okay so we've got here these are um, so we're looking around this is the this is the studio room these are these are tannoy super red monitors massively over uh, 
over um, exposed for a room of this size and uh, they're basically these high-end studio monitors from about 1979 and the reason why I wanted uh, Super Reds is if you sort of look up on your tannoy history I actually wanted some 60s Reds but they're just so much money that these were the sort of next best thing the Super Reds so I wanted those in and they're powered by a couple of quad amps which are behind you these machines here for those of you that um, this is a tape reel to reel what they used to make records on before the advent of uh, iPhones and digital mediums so on this machine here you, it's a Studio A84 track you can record four tracks at a time so you put your drums down listen back to it and you put your bass down you've, you've got four tracks this one is an eight track this one here is a 24 track at the end there, buried, we've got a 16 track. So they're all different, um, you know, and it's just different ways of recording. At the end of the room here, we've got a Hammond's. <laughs> Biggest accomplishment. Um, well, you know, obviously having two lovely children is, a, is always the big one, you know, uh, Joel and Lena creating those. Just that, and just you know, hopefully getting through life, trying to be better. Uh, you know, that's another accomplishment as well. So yeah, favorite film. I mean, again, cliche in 2028. 20, it's probably Star Wars from 1977, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory from 1971, yes. Taxi Driver from 1976. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many great films. It's just you know. Rear them off. Do you ever like hit a block sometimes when it comes to writing? No, you never hit a block, but sometimes you sort of uh, you, you end up with a meandering melody, mm. which you know it isn't the best melody in the world, but you always keep going and then something will come. You know, you never, well, as a songwriter, the worst thing you can do is be sitting there trying to make a song. I'm trying to make a song, but I don't know where it's gonna go. And then go, oh no, that's no good, and you know, just go with it onto the next one and then you'll get a, another melody and you know and try and pick that one up and uh, yeah just don't ever stop making songs up you know it's great it's fantastic mm. what really makes me smile is is people really I think people make me smile and the reactions in people and you know just being able to make people happy with music or talking to someone that makes me smile passion is something that makes me smile like if someone who might appreciate this Studer A80 one inch eight track from 1972 or three or whenever it's from and someone who'd appreciate that or whatever it is whatever you're into be passionate you know that's that's the key message to to everyone being just be passionate and that will carry you through your chosen field or your chosen thing whether it's music art sport you know business whatever you do passion is the key